We greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the book of Romans. Turning our Bibles to Romans chapter 7 and verse 2. For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. So we've seen that uh, the law that binds our bodies is a very temporal law. It has effect over us only as long as our body is alive. Because the pain in a dead body cannot be felt. It makes no sense. Now, for example, if the Bible says tooth for tooth and the person for whom the judgment falls and his tooth has to be, uh, you know, pulled away, suddenly he's, he dies, then there is no meaning in pulling away the tooth of the one who's died because he doesn't feel the pain. He doesn't see the effect of missing the tooth. He doesn't carry in him that reproach because nobody sees that missing tooth anyway. So the law ends the moment we die. Now he's coming to give us a very precise example which all of us understand whether uh, there can be cultural difference or ethnic differences. We all understand this law and this common law of marriage. And when he comes to this common law of marriage, he says, uh, you know, uh, that when um, the law that binds uh, a woman and a man in uh, the marriage covenant, you know, in Christian marriages, um, outright straight, they say, you know, uh, we will uh, remain faithful until death do us part. In other words, on the day of marriage itself, the bride and the bridegroom, you know, uh, as they are, um, you know, uh, making their vows uh, and uh, they recite after the one solemnizing, they say, death do us part. So they recognize that the day death comes, it is an unofficial divorce or it is an eternal separation. And the Lord Jesus very clearly says, when the Pharisees asked him about it, he said, um, uh, when you go to heaven, you will be like angels. There will be no giving in marriage or taking in marriage. There will be no relationship like a wife or a husband relationship because we will be in the spirit. But whereas Apostle Paul now restraining ourselves to understanding what he's trying to say, he says that a marriage covenant is broken the day that person dies because the covenant doesn't hold good to dead people. So just outside of the context, one very important thing we need to recognize is this is a very small, temporary, time limited covenant. So we need to be very faithful because Hebrews chapter 13, it says, if you are unfaithful in your marriage, the judgment of the Lord is eternal. The adulterous heart and the immoral heart carries the punishment even after that person ends his married life and eternally gets separated from his spouse, even then unfaithfulness in marriage is going to have eternal consequences. So this is just a word outside of the context, but may be a warning to all of us who are married that faithfulness in this little life is going to have eternal consequences unfaithfulness is going to carry a burden even into eternity where the judgment of the Lord will fall upon us. So coming back here, it says that this law that, that unites, that binds the man and woman is a temporary law. So we need to be very careful with this time-bound law. We close with a word of prayer. A loving, living, gracious, heavenly Father, we praise and we thank you for this beautiful law system that you have brought, wherein we are bound. But also, thank you very much, because this physical law has limits, whereas, thank you for the spiritual law, that a connection with you 
has eternal consequences. Help us to both rejoice in the spiritual law and also have that sense of fear that we have eternal consequences and live lives very diligently and with fear and trembling safeguard our salvation. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen.